Mountain of Silence, Drone Metal Recordings as Mystical Texts by Owen Coggins. I suggest that drone metal sound recordings can be heard as mystical texts. According to theorist Michel de Sato's work on mystics, a term Sato uses in the sense of a science or body of knowledge analogous to physics or mathematics. I situate Sato's work in the history of the study of mysticism. Then I offer a brief description and history of drone metal, describing musicians' committed engagement with mystical traditions, before discussing drone metal as exemplifying Sato's loose typology of functions and operations occurring in mystical texts. Though pretensions toward the eternal and universal abound in the classical study of mysticism, the construct has been shown to be both geographically and historically bounded, coalescing from 19th century strands of Orientalism and occultism in the works of theologians, anthropologists and literary intellectuals, which aimed, in Messia Eliada's words, to, quote, rediscover the existential dimensions of religious man in the archaic societies, unquote. A risk in such studies is a flattening of diverse experiences and practices under a posited essential true core of all world religion, which may even lead to a further elaboration in claims that diverse practices are in fact unrealized or degenerate manifestations of a certain valorized type, such as in R.C. Zayner's mysticism, which is only genuine when it is Catholic or at least plausibly assimilatable. Materialism and biochemical reductionism also supply this kind of foundation, as in, for example, Aldous Huxley's ideas about the confluence of effects of mescaline, fasting and stained glass windows on visionary perception. More recent studies by Jeffrey Krapow and Don Cupit move away from the experience and locate mysticism in texts, Cupit claiming that the writing of the text is the mystical experience, language always already having structured experience. Kripal does not go as far, but does suggest that evidence of mysticism can be found in writing about mysticism. Both writers draw on Sato's insistence on recognizing historical and cultural specificity while allowing space to draw connections that hint at related motivations and departures. Michel de Sato, itinerant Jesuit theologian, historian, psychoanalyst and cultural theorist, engaged with mystics throughout his career. Sato does not ignore or explain away the structuring particularities of texts, nor abandon the mystic's claims of an originary experience. Instead, he investigates the ways in which mystic texts are compelled to use language differently, a heterogeneous collection of tactics and operations Sato groups under the description manners of speaking. Sato finds echoes of mystics in art, literature, poetry, psychoanalysis, and historiography, familiar operations which mark diverse aesthetic currents and bodies of knowledge with residues and resurgences of characteristic mystic textual practices. Given Sato's frequent uses of musical metaphor, it is not surprising that we can hear the strains of mystics in drone metal. In the mystic fable, mystics is a questioning of the epistemological grounding of the church when the absolute foundation in scripture had been lost, throwing into doubt the authority of the word and a proliferation of hermeneutics and interpretation. Mystic texts were those which had become separated from the institution, hinting at an esoteric knowledge that was a function of the estrangement of meaning from guaranteed truth. The production of texts in the margins by those rapidly dispossessed by the changing epistemological tides bore witness to and contributed to the undermining of the institution of the church, mystics left stranded on the shore. This reflexive interrogation of foundations took place within texts, in operations that pushed language, broke it, and attempted to display what was missing in its scattered fragments. In what Soto describes as an apacifying of signifiers, items of language are turned inward, in paradoxes and oxymorons, presenting signs adrift from meaning and signification, in attempts to bear witness and gesture towards the loss or absence that was their foundation. A kind of semantic prestidigitation, a substitution of one secret for another, took place. In linguistic contortions, the texts promised encoded meaning, while hiding in plain sight the secret that language could no longer guarantee meaning. Sato analyzes the garden of earthly delights, observing that the painting suggests pathways which lead us not to meaning, but to a walking of the pathways. The secret, obvious to those who had seen it, but infuriating to those who still sought the hidden treasure, led to an exclusivity which invited accusations of heresy. Texts denied themselves, endlessly locating truth elsewhere. The repetition of a not here, but there, indicates a categorical not here, an ever-present absence of truth, combined with a perhaps there, which leads the pilgrim on. 
The texts speak of pilgrimages and then themselves embark upon circuitous routes, journeys of translation and dispersal. In gesturing towards a lost origin, they themselves lose their origins, using a tormented language to say what it did not say, the sculpture of the tactics of which they were the instruments. Drone metal recordings present expanses of distorted guitar noise in a radical departure from the heavy metal tradition within which they originate. Hugely influenced by Black Sabbath, musicians in the 90s returned to that band's style with a noisy, impure purism, forsaking the virtuosic pretensions to high art in mainstream metal or the ever faster and more technical progressions in thrash. Drone metal developed in the United States, particularly as a result of Dylan Carlson's Seattle band Earth, although related and contributing developments were occurring in the same period elsewhere. I focus on North American drone metal here, as it's more rooted in a metal idiom than related currents, such as power electronics and Japanese noise, and also tends to be more overtly engaged with religious themes. Earth's lengthy monotonous two was highly influential in an emergent subgenre. Subsequent recordings moved toward more conventional song structure before turning to a deeply meditative approach with 2005's Hex or Printing in the Infernal Method and later records, which retained the extensive repetition of riffs but largely abandoned distortion in favour of a more acoustic drone sound. At a time when metal had moved on, Sleep returned to Black Sabbath's signature style for two albums, before in 1995 moving far beyond this somewhat derivative style in recording an epic hour-long opus to sacramental marijuana consumption, rendered in the mystical language of Middle Eastern pilgrimage and monotonous riffs. Testing not only aesthetic limits but record company patience, the band split, spawning a number of side projects, most notably Om, who furthered the drone aesthetic to include a more explicit emphasis on meditation and mantra. Sun, playing on the name of genre founding band Earth, was created in Seattle by musicians who had performed in various metal bands. Sun have explain, explored the extreme aesthetic of drone metal while extending it to incorporate other contributions while remaining committed to the amplified noise from which the genre emerged. Drone metal is consistently and contemplatively engaged with specifically mystical traditions in artwork, lyrics, performance practices, textual references and sound. This could be seen as a merely qualitative extension of Black Sabbath's obsession with crucifixes, though heavy metal's engagement with religion has largely been oppositional and provocative, mainly concerned with a critique of Christianity, often through Satanisms variously conceived. Drone Metal's interest, however, is far more nuanced. The cover art and title of Arm's God is Good, for example, is difficult to imagine elsewhere in metal, as even evangelical Christian metal tends to adopt the more widespread provocative symbolic language. Just as Kripal notes that studies of mysticism often themselves display features of mystical writing, I argue that these recordings are not art about mysticism, but are in fact mystical texts. Language strikingly reminiscent of Certeau's manners of speaking is used in track titles and reviews. Sun's use of, in a track title of the longest word in the Hungarian language pushes at the limits, and Earth's Angels of Darkness, Demons of Light plays with religiously inflected contrasts. Drone metal recordings are frequently described as cinematic, operatic, or otherwise visual. The frequency with which listeners appeal to a visual language in describing sound betrays a sense of incompleteness in that the sound appears to need images, but also excess in that the sound goes almost as far as to present images. Drone Metal's manners of speaking, though, are not limited to verbal language. Drones themselves have religious connotations with unchanging sound representing, or perhaps instantiating, a transcendental reality, sound eternal and universal, yet experienced in local specificity. Various other sounds used in drone metal are also linked to religion, such as choirs, chants, and even horns that reference a transcendental spirituality in jazz. The sounds that link drone with metal, though, are the riffs, the semantic units of metal songs. Given this loose comparison with structures of language, the drone metal riff, far slower and repeated far more extensively than the conventional metal riff, resembles religious forms of language like prayer or recitation. This usage is sometimes incomprehensible if listening with a, within a paradigm of metal semantics predicated on progression, but these practices fit Sato's description of a focus on the materiality of a sign over content or structured meaning, while matching the accusations of heresy leveled at the new and therefore suspect mystics in the 16th century. 
The chosen moniker for the sleep bandmate's subsequent project, Om, is telling, a word for which the meaning is the sound, which, when voiced, has spiritual effect. This turn towards the materiality of the sign is further emphasised in the obsession with heaviness, a concern across heavy metal since the genre's naming, despite the concept's notorious evasion of concrete definition. But the superlative heaviness of drone metal is consistently mentioned, again relating to Sato's materiality and opacity of signs. Symbolic power shifts from the electric guitar to the amplifier. Sun are themselves named after an amplifier manufacturer, in a sublimation of a creative identity into the medium of transmission. A concern shared by Earth, titling live albums Sun Amps and Smashed Guitars and Radio Live. Amplifiers are set up as altars, sometimes even in churches. Amplification in itself, rather than amplification of any particular note, tone, message or meaning, is the aim. Analogous to mystical writers attempting to illuminate the medium of language over any particular semantic content. The eternal departures cited by Soto and evident in his own texts are a strong theme in drone metal. Sleep have long been fascinated with sacred places such as the holy mountain of their second record and Jerusalem, the alternative title to their third. And this interest has continued with Om, who reference holy mountains in the Himalayas in Sudan, perform in churches and sacred places and return to pilgrimage as a lyrical theme. Journeys are often mentioned in descriptions and reviews of drone metal recordings, even for records without explicit thematic connection to sacred places. These features suggest the use of rep repetitive sound to create ritual space, the holiness of the holy mountain created by the sacred journey. Mystical texts from a number of traditions appear in drone metal. Earth, in their sparse use of language, refer to an obscure riddle from the Old Testament in The Bees Made Honey and the Lion's Skull, and to a line from William's William Blake, giving the subtitle to the album Hex, or Printing in the Infernal Method. Frequent reference is made too to the sacred texts of metal, the four gospels of Black Sabbath's early 70s records. These are referenced in Sleep's recordings, Volume 1 and Volume 2, while Sun make more of an offering to the roots of the black metal subgenre in inviting noted black metal musicians to perform with them and in covering and naming songs. Earth's William Blake line is telling. Drone metal recordings perhaps fulfilling Blake's prophecy of a hellish yet revelatory technology which would dissolve illusions and distribute texts which induce physical experience of the sacred. Quote, but first the notion that man has a body distinct from his soul is to be expunged. This I shall do by printing in the infernal method, by corrosives, which in hell are salutary and medicinal, melting apparent surfaces away and displaying the infinite which was hid. Jacques Attali, in Noise, The Political Economy of Music, describes a society in which the culture industry routinely finds ways to, quote, deritualize a social form, repress an activity of the body, specialize its practice, sell it as a spectacle, generalize its consumption, then see to it that it is stockpiled until it loses its meaning, end quote. Like the mystic texts which marked a receding tide of a particular structuring foundation of meaning, drone metal texts present the noise of physicality against the signal of transferred information. Finally, just as Serto, the theologian, relates a fable of texts in search of the foundational absence of God, drone metal offers noise which evokes its own impossible foundation. Drone metal silences, even in its cacophonous noise, departing beyond music to seek its opposite, toward which it gestures while facing away. If God is the reason, the guarantee and the impossible limit of a mystic theology, the index that pointed to the failure of all signs, then drone metal's mystic noise is founded on an absence of sound which determines all sound. Thus, in these contemporary texts, the foundation of mystic science is indeed that mountain of silence.